We've had a major problem with elephant here. We had one elephant that had learned how to push a pole over and then short the wires out. The Pandamatenga farming project began in 1984 when the government of Botswana allocated an initial 25,000 hectares of virgin bush to pioneering commercial farmers. The aim was to increase the country's cereal production and boost food security. With fertile black cotton soils and an annual rainfall of 600 millimetres, it was the most suitable area in the country for crop production. Transforming this expanse of wilderness into agricultural lands proved to be challenging. When it first started the scheme, there was no fence, and it soon became evident that it was not going to work due to all the animal pressure and damage. Thankfully, I think about 2002, the government put this fence around the farms. Before we had the fence in Panda, we had huge problems. We had a lot of elephants in the fields, we couldn't control them. We had two, three hundred herds of buffalo going through the fields, destroying a crop in one night. We had uh, eland coming through. And since they've put up the fence, production in Panamatenga actually went up about 120 percent. 92 percent of all cereal production in Botswana came from Panda. So it helped a lot with the food security in Botswana. We recently started looking at export markets and we're currently producing two beans which we use as a crop rotation on our cereal to be exported, which opened a new opportunity for the farmers. We're exporting currently chickpeas and also mung beans, which helps a lot with all the nitrogens we get back in the soil for the next year's cereal production. The Pandamatenga area provides significant employment to the people of the country. The permanent employees in the farms during normal activities will range about 600 people. And then at peak season, an extra of about 1,400 people come and then we'll have an average of about 2,000 people working in the farms. This fence is uh, approximately 160 kilometers long, encircling the farming area. Cropping land, approximately 43,000 hectares. We are grateful for the fence because without the fence, they wouldn't be this farming but it comes at a, as a, at a huge cost to us because we have to pay a, an annual levy, which is currently at 15 pula per hectare. We employ a contractor. We currently pay him 36,000 pula a month. And his job is to go around and ensure that the fence is up to speed, especially the voltage. Those wires on either side of that fence are producing electrical pulses between five and 7,000 volts. And that's the deterrent for elephant, eland, buffalo. Giraffe is a big problem. The male on the outside, he fights the giraffe, male on the inside, and they tr destroy the fence. And also males break in to get to the females. So we really need to get all the giraffe out. And with a game capture of trying to push him through the fence has failed. We've done it a number of times. The only solution to getting the giraffe out is to dart them one by one and move them out. We've had a major problem with elephant here. We had one elephant that had learned how to push a pole over and then short the wires out and then push the fence down and walk in. And our main fear was that that elephant was going to teach other elephants that method of getting in. He was busy for more than a year maybe and it most probably cost us in the region of half a million puller the damage. We requested permission to shoot that elephant. We were denied. DWNP stepped in and came and helped us to translocate the elephant. When they put the fence up, there was quite a lot of wildlife trapped within the fence. These animals have continued to breed and they pose some threats to our farming production within the farm. Uh, my first year of farming in Pandamatenga, I had a huge loss where the elands damaged 100 hectares of my cowpeas. They came and fed into my cowpeas and then one main problem being the bush, because I was still debushing the area. I had part that I had already debushed, and then there was still a huge bush where the eland would just come and hide in there. I even had to work at night, come with my workers to chase away the eland from the, from the crop, but we were just fighting a losing battle. They ended up having to destroy the whole 100 hectares. The only way we can manage this wildlife is either by uh, shooting them when they're in the fields or translocating them out of the farming area, which we have done. These animals, they eat our crops. We don't get any compensation and when we shoot them, 
uh, all the meat belongs to the government and go, it benefits the community, yes, and, and the meat is auctioned, but we don't get anything. And I think that needs to be looked at somehow. We have a lot of jackal on our fields. They are our friends because they eat the mice, which can build up in the farms, especially with all this grain lying on the floor after harvest. We protect the jackals and also we have lions and uh, leopard which come in and, and eat the wildlife. The other challenges that we face as farmers here are issues of um, quilia, quilia beds, the, the doves as well. They come and destroy uh, our crops. In the previous 2017-2018 cropping season, we had a huge infestation of quilia in the, in the area. We'd have a situation where quilia can just destroy a whole 500 hectare farm within a month. Quilia is the third most significant damage to crops in Panamatanga. The government has tried many different things. Uh, one of the methods they use is uh, blasting at the roost sites, um, which is somewhat effective, but it can take weeks to find a roost. And in the meantime, they can, uh, about 5 million birds damage 50 tons of sorghum a day. Um, so these roosts that we find in Panda have been up to 20 million birds. Um, so it can do significant damage on a daily basis. These falcons don't catch quilia or doves or anything else. We just call them for a food reward once they've cleared the field. So it's a positive reinforcement, very environmentally friendly and with significant results. And this project has been going since uh, the research trials in 2013. When they stopped hunting some years ago, the hunters used to put water holes outside the fence and maintain them throughout the year. The elephants were thousands in the bush here. And then when that all dried up, we've definitely seen a reduction in the number of animals in these hunting areas because they've had to move to find water. It would be interesting to see the correlation between the stopping of hunting and elephants and predators moving into previous areas where they were not seen, causing a human-wildlife conflict.